Welcome back to Gruber Motor Company. What we wanted to show you today was a particular type of work we do on a Tesla Roadster. Many of these Roadsters that you see here come to us with dead batteries. And what we do is repair them. What we have begun to uh, realize is that when we do a battery drop like we're doing with this car, for example, it's a very labor intensive process because you essentially have to drop a thousand pound battery pack out of this little uh, Tesla Roadster. You have to take off the majority of suspension components in the back, crack it open, and then we do work inside the pack. Typically, the type of work that we end up doing is finding either resistive cells in these sheets or fixing the electronics that are in this battery pack. And that's where we're beginning to realize we need to expand our capabilities because of the age of these cars. Buried inside this thousand pound battery pack, which is inaccessible until you drop it, are two vital electronic components. One of them is what's called an APS module, which is a DC to DC converter. This DC to DC converter is what converts 400 volts on the main battery pack to 12 volts to power all of the devices in the car. Security, audio, certain modules, lights. This is a highly custom box. It is not an off-the-shelf item. And when Tesla was making the Tesla Roadster, they went to two different companies to have this manufactured for them. It includes thermal management, so it's part of the cooling system. And we'll show you in the lab here shortly what the inside of this looks like. But the bottom line is, inside this enclosure are electronic components that are aging, that need to be upgraded at least every eight to 10 years. The second module that sits in this ESS pack is a battery safety module, a BSM board. And it is a logic board that essentially monitors all of the safety functions in this battery pack and communicates with the rest of the car. This also has components on it that need to be replaced from time to time. So we'll go in the lab now and we'll show you the DC to DC converter disassembled and what we recommend as an upgrade or as a rebuild for that device. The ideal time to perform these upgrades on these two electronic devices buried deep inside the car is when you drop the battery pack because everything is accessible at that point in time. So let's go in the lab and I'll show you what's inside the DC to DC converter so we can see what needs to be upgraded and rebuilt. So in the electronics lab here is where we rebuild these electronic devices. What you see here is a bunch of power electronic modules being rebuilt. And in Al's area here, he's been working on the DC to DC converters or the APS units. And uh, the first thing that we have to do to work on these is develop schematics, which is one of the things that Al has been doing here. The reason for that is we need test points and we need uh, component location. We need a bill of materials in order to work on these devices. Um, here we have an example of two different DC to DC converters. This was the MarTech unit, which was the first generation DC to DC converter in the Tesla Roadster. And it was made by a company that is no longer in business. Um, it was also considered an inferior design in some ways because Tesla eventually switched to another vendor for these DC to DC converters, which is the Delta unit that you see here. The old MarTech unit is difficult to service because they potted everything. And you can see this gray potting compound was poured on top of components, MOSFETs. But the main thing that we do during a rebuild is we change relays and these filter capacitors that you see throughout this uh, DC to DC converter. And the fundamental reason is the electrolytic capacitors have a shelf life. They age, they become resistive, and they don't last forever. So they recommend that every eight years, these electrolytic capacitors get replaced and changed. The same is true in the Delta unit, which you'll notice is 
uh, more elegant design. It doesn't have the potting compound poured all over the components. And um, the layout is actually much nicer to work on than this old MarTech unit. The bottom line is this manufacturer is out of business. This manufacturer, which was originally in Taiwan, is no longer building this part. And we've tried for six months to convince them to do so. The problem is there's a high minimum order quantity if they would even build it, which is the same problem Tesla had originally when they went to many vendors and said, we're going to need 2,400 of these because that's how many cars we're going to build. And uh, that just isn't enough of a production run to really get aggressive pricing. So the MarTech unit is defunct. The company is defunct. This unit, the only option is to repair it. And then the Delta unit, they also refuse to go back into production. And even if they would, the MOQ would be so high, it would, be, it would not be cost effective to reproduce this product. The difficulty is because of its unusual geometry and because of the uh, thermal management that runs through here, this is not an off-the-shelf product where you can go to another manufacturer and say, hey, can, you, can we use your off-the-shelf product? This is a highly custom part that goes into the Tesla Roadster ESS pack. So the only option is to continue to rebuild and repair these. The second electronic assembly buried deep inside the Tesla Roadster ESS main battery pack is the BSM board which is also a highly custom board designed specifically for the Tesla Roadster. It is not an off-the-shelf product. And this BSM board also has aging components that need to be replaced. You can see a number of electrolytic capacitors on this board. And we have a couple of relays here, which are mechanical devices that also wear with time. Again, this is not a board that you can go and get from any vendor because this is highly custom, designed specifically for the Tesla Roadster, and to recreate something like this in the type of quantities that we would need for a spare parts program is just not cost effective. So the only option is to rebuild, repair, and maintain these products. So our goal is to educate Tesla customers, especially Tesla Roadster customers, continue to innovate, and uh, create solutions like what you see here in our lab. Make sure to watch our channel, support our videos, and let us know what you want to see more of. Thank you.